Hello, YouTubers. Well, I just acquired this uh, piece of telecom equipment, and I was about to scrap it out and uh, recover all of the good stuff on it that contains gold, and I thought, well, maybe I should make a video of this. This might interest a lot of people. Um, and maybe I'll make it a series of videos as I scrap out equipment. I can show you what equipment has a lot of gold in it, what equipment doesn't have a lot of gold in it, and what equipment isn't even worth bothering with. So, yeah, maybe I'll make a series of videos. And um, this particular piece of equipment, I'm really excited to get it. It's, uh, it's an Interesis 5G102-06. There it is. Gigabit Ethernet, Ethernet Switch Matrix. And uh, I really like this piece of equipment for a couple of reasons. First off, you know, anybody who's seen my previous video that I posted to YouTube will know that I just love Gold Corner BGAs. And this thing is loaded with Gold Corner BGAs. It's got a ton of them on it. In fact, I was just taking off some of these... Uh, heat sinks on here and every one of these heat sinks has another gold corner BGA under it. So if we count them up, let's see what we got here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six across the front. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen up here. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So we got seventeen gold corner BGAs. Uh, got a big old flat pack up there eye seat up there that's going to have some gold bond wires in it. Got some miscellaneous other ICs that are going to have some gold bond wires in them. And I think it's kind of hard to tell but I think this is, yeah, this is this is a double-sided board. I see some chips on the other side. So once I get this apart, we'll see what's on the other side. But this is pretty this is pretty exciting. We've got 17 gold corner BGAs on this thing. Um, another reason I'm excited about it is there's some visible gold on it. I mean, we got Got gold pins over here. Not very many, but some. Got some gold pins over here. Again, not very many, but some. Got gold pins on these connectors in these sockets here. Um, and then up here, I've seen this before on rack mount equipment. There's a lot of gold pins inside this connector here. And there's some big, fat... Let's see if I can get it to focus here without dropping the phone. Big, fat, gold-covered pins in there in the power connectors. So, yeah, so there's lots of reasons to be excited about this, this piece of equipment. Also, another reason to be excited about it is it's a module, and it plugs into a rack. So, there's not much here. The, the, the teardown is super simple. You know, just a few screws, and, and it'll be a part. You know, it's not a, it's not a big chassis that you've got to disassemble to get to everything. This is, this is super simple teardown. So this is an exciting piece of equipment. I got it for basically nothing. So it's going to be pure profit, everything I can get out of it. And if you can find a piece of, a, of telecom equipment like this, you are just golden, literally golden. So let me get back to work here. I will pause the camera and take off the rest of these heat sinks. They come off pretty easy for the most part. But uh, I might need pliers to get some of them off. We'll see. So I won't make you watch that. I'll just take them off and I'll be right back. Okay, all the heat sinks are off. And there's those 17 lovely gold corner BGAs. All right. So what I want to see now is what the other side of the board looks like. So I've got to take out some screws. I've already taken some out off camera. There's some more that need to come out. Yeah, I, I started disassembling this thing, and then I thought, hey, this might make a good video. Let me, uh, I must have missed a screw somewhere. Oh, there it is, in the middle of the board. Sometimes they blend in. I thought, this might make an interesting video. Oh, there's some more gold pins I didn't even notice before. So, yeah, there's some pins on here. There we go. Now it's free. Oh yeah, look at all those chips on the other side. Those look like, I don't know, they might be RAM chips. Hard to say, I'd have to look up the number. But there's there's a fair number of them. Now those, those have the look of RAM chips over there. These might be something else. Those definitely have the look of RAM chips there. 
And from the number on them, I would suggest suspect they probably are RAM chips. I'm not sure what these other chips are, but there's a lot of them. But I'm sure there's probably some gold uh, gold bond wires in there. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, all right, so nice double-sided board. I do love telecom equipment. I have a video on YouTube about how great telecom equipment is, and this is just an example of why it's so great. It's just so well built and they use so much gold in it to make uh, the reliability higher all right now this is this is steel unfortunately not aluminum so not a lot of scrap value to it but uh well who knows i might need a piece of sheet metal from one of my projects all right so let me see if i can expose some of these gold pins up here and show you what they look like Alright, I have seen these exact same type of uh, connectors on other rack mount equipment, so I know that there's gold pins in here, and quite a few of them. And there they are. Look at the gold on the end of those pins. So... Yeah, not too hard to get to either. Oops, sorry, I keep bumping the tripod. There they are. And then these... Yeah, oops. Yeah, the whole thing came out. But uh, there's those. So... Yeah, these actually come out of the board pretty easy. So I'll do that later. But, uh, wow, nice. All I really need to do now is depopulate the board. And uh, if you've seen my other video on how I depopulate boards, I just do it in a kiln. I have a couple of kilns that I use for uh, glass work. But... Um, I'll set, uh, I'll put this in one of my kilns and I'll set it to around 400 Fahrenheit and um, the solder will all melt and all these parts will just fall right off of this board. They're all surface mount. Um, a few of the gold pins I think are through hole but they're all pretty much surface mount stuff and it'll all just fall right off the board once uh, the temperature, the melting point of solder is reached. And, um, you know, I can just reach in with a glove and shake it and everything falls off the board. It's so simple and easy. So, I'll show you that when I do it and I'll show you what I get off this board. I'll, uh, I'll clean out the kiln and, uh, show you just what comes off this board. Okay, one thing before we head over to the kiln, I took all of these, uh, gold-plated connectors off of here before I put it in the kiln because at the temperature the kiln's going to be running the plastic might melt and turn it all into a gummy mess and embed the, 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 the gold inside the plastic. I've had that happen before so I, I, I harvested all those off the board before I take it to the kiln. I might have the same trouble with this stuff over here so what I might try to do is to just pull get my pliers and uh, pull these off because they've got gold pins in them before I put this in the kiln, just so uh, this part right here doesn't melt and make a make a mess. So let me see here. I can do this with the phone in my hand. I don't know. Ah, look at that. Gold pins. All right, they're exposed now. Anyway. Oh. So yeah. Okay. So some of them are loose and some of them aren't, but they'll fall off probably in the kiln. They'll, they won't be embedded in melted plastic. Now, if the plastic melts at, you know, too low a temperature. So, all righty. So now we're ready for the kiln. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so here we are out in back of my shop at the kilns. Uh, the light's a little harsh out here. It's, it's early morning and the sun's, this is on the east side of the building, so... Uh, so here's my smaller kiln. There's my bigger kiln over there. I use it almost exclusively for glass work because uh, depopulating boards is a little dirty. I don't use this smaller kiln so much for glass work. So uh, 
I use it for more for depopulating boards right now. So what I've got is it's it's a big uh, it's a 15 inch scut kiln. It can hold a lot of circuit boards. I can either stack the big ones up in it or I can put smaller ones in a stainless steel wire basket and stick them in there. And uh, I've got a uh, a catch bowl at the bottom. Uh, basically this is like the ceramic uh, bowl that would go under a huge potted plant to catch water. So it it works good for catching components falling off of boards too. Um, got uh, thermal couple probes sticking in on the side. Got my home built kiln controller over here. I'll put a link to it. How I built it in the uh, in the uh, description of this video for anybody who's interested. It's it's as old as the hills, but still working great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this board in the kiln like so. Normally I put a lot more boards in here, but. Right now, this is the only thing I've got that needs depopulated. Besides, I want to see exactly what all just comes off of this board. It should be interesting. So what I'm going to do is, let me close the lid. And uh, turn on the kiln controller. And it's a little hard to see in this light. Uh, that and... Uh, the beat frequency of the of the LED display in the phones is making it flash. It doesn't look like it's flashing to my eye, but it's flashing on the phone. Let me uh, start up a cycle. I already have a pre-programmed cycle in here for depopulating the boards. So I've just started the cycle. So this kiln's going to start ramping up in temperature, and it's going to ramp up to about 400F over the next hour. But I'll check it in like half hour, 45 minutes, because by then it may have reached a high enough temperature that a lot of the solder has melted on the board. And I could just reach in there with a gloved hand, shake the board, and everything falls right off into the little catch basin at the bottom. It's really super simple, the way to depopulate surface mount boards. I love it. So we'll just let this uh, heat up and cook, and we'll see what we get. Okay, it's been a little while longer than I was planning on uh, on le leaving this go. My buddy Ralph showed up and we got to jawboning and uh, this kind of got put on the back burner. The temperature is up to about 320 degrees, so it's not quite all the way up to 400 yet. But uh, let's see what we got. Give this a little bit of a shake. Oh yeah. Look at the components just fall right off that board. And obviously it's warmer at the top of the kiln than at the bottom, so I will flip this around and put it the other way up. And close the door lid and let it sit for a little while longer. Come back and give it another shake and I'll bet pretty much everything else will fall right off the board. Okay, here's everything I got off of that board. Everything I'm keeping anyway. And yeah, some stuff I'm not keeping too. So here's all the gold pins in here. So quite a few of those gold plated pins. Over here the real prize, the gold corner BGAs, all 17 of them. They all just fell right off the board. Um, here's all the other IC chips that were on the board as well as some, uh, some big power transistors or voltage regulators one or the other. You know I just put them with the IC chips and process them same. They've, they've got a little bit of gold in them. Um, oh, here's some uh, crystals and oscillators over here. Now, some people collect these because they have silver in them. I really can't be bothered with silver, but this one here is gold plated. I'm going to throw it in with the gold stuff. I've got a way to get gold plating off, and uh, someday I'm going to do a video on that. It doesn't involve dissolving all the base metals. It makes life a lot easier not having to do that. And then uh, some of this other stuff that fell off the board. I think these are chokes based on the weight. They're very heavy, so there's probably like a uh, an iron core and a bunch of copper wire in there. And here's a couple little, I think, are power modules that came off. They've got a couple little ICs on them, but they're really not worth anything. Probably just throw those out. And then there's a bunch of debris left here in the bottom of the uh, of the catch basin, including a lot of uh, tantalum capacitors. I really don't bother with tantalum capacitors. I know some people love them, collect them. Oh, there's a little transistor, a couple little transistors right there. I'll grab those and put them with the ICs. 
you know, but I, I just can't be bothered with the tantalum capacitors and the MLCCs. There's there's probably a thousand MLCCs scattered over the bottom of this catch basin, tiny, tiny, tiny little ones. Not my cup of joe. You know, it's the gold. The gold in the pins, the gold in the BGAs, and the gold in the IC chips. That's that's what I'm after. So, um, altogether, a good little haul from a, a small board that didn't cost me much. So if you can if you can get any of those Enterasis uh, um, matrix switches, you know they're pretty good yield. You know, and if you get the modules rather than the standalone boxes, there's not there's not much tear down to them. It's basically just just take the board off the back plane backing and uh, start stripping stuff off. So. Okay, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed this first teardown video, and there will probably be more because a lot of scrap comes through here to feed my obsession with recovering gold from electronic waste. So there will be more teardowns in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Keep it safe out there. Bye.